Hi folks, my wife wanted some CCTV and she got some companies to quote her. They quoted her £1,600, that's $2,000 for four cameras and I thought I'm not having that, I can do it myself. This video explains how I've gone from researching CCTV to installing it and I hope it might help someone. Okay, the first question I asked was, what do I want my CCTV to do? Well, the first thing I wanted to make sure was that it was meaningful footage. And what I mean by that is, I wanted footage that could pick up registration plates of vehicles, license plates, and that I'd have a chance of identifying any suspects from. Because if you haven't got those two things, the CCTV's a waste of money. I also wanted to be able to uh, view the CCTV remotely. I wanted it to be easy to use and I wanted it to be smart so that if anything happened, I wouldn't have to trawl through hours and hours of footage and that the system would pick things like events up for me. When I decided we were getting CCTV, I surveyed my property and I worked out where exactly I wanted to be covered by the cameras and where I was thinking of placing the cameras and in the end I opted just for four cameras. I wanted to cover my front door, see who's at the front door. I wanted to cover my driveway with footage. I wanted to cover my uh, side alleyway and I wanted to cover my garden. You know what guys, the longest part of this process for me was spending hours online doing my research before I even started the job. So let me share some of that with you. So my research, I looked into all the different types of CCTV. You've got the doorbell type cameras, which I decided weren't for me because the data was owned by sort of Ring is the famous one, and you had to pay a subscription each month to access your data. So that wasn't for me. I then looked at um, wireless cameras and when I looked into it, they can be a little bit unreliable because if there's a problem with your Wi-Fi, they stop working. And wireless cameras aren't actually wireless because you still need a wire for the power. Before people start shouting at me about wireless cameras not having to have a wire if they've got batteries, yeah, you can get them with batteries. but it still means that you've got to get up a ladder and change the battery and the camera every so often, which I didn't fancy doing. So then I looked at the third type, which were wired, hardwired CCTV systems, and they were the best. They were the most reliable, they were cheaper, and you've got to have wires for your wireless anyway, so why not have a wire that does both the power and the video? So that's what I decided on. I had a look at all sorts of systems from cheap things on Amazon to really expensive and in the end I went for a mic called Hikvision which they were a decent mic, they were a brand name, very popular, they are used by a lot of businesses and that's what I went for. So what I went for in the end was this Hikvision DVR and this DVR allows you to do up to 4K resolution, but I decided to go for HD rather than 4K, which I'll explain further on. Um, the cameras I went for were these Vivid HD, what we call Sony Starlight camera. And basically how they work is that they operate in really low light and still keep the footage like daytime rather than going into infrared. Now these cameras are what they call 2.8 millimeter wide angle lens cameras, which offer a wide field of view. But after I'd started uh, fitting the CCTV system, I realized that uh, I needed to zoom in a bit more on one of my cameras. So I changed one of these cameras for this guy, which was a, a bigger, what they call a very focal camera.
Okay, so the reason I only went for HD cameras and not for 4K cameras was one, they're cheaper. And secondly, when I did some research into it, the camera lens is more important for detail than the actual number of pixels. On this first image, you can see that there's a lot of trees on the right and a lot of the porch on the left that's just wasted image. And at the edge of my driveway, you can't really make out any registration numbers of vehicles. On this second image, I've zoomed the camera in and I've taken away the unwanted footage. And you can see here, you can actually make out the detail of registration numbers. Before people start shouting at me about pixels, I do accept that 4K is better than HD, but for what I wanted, HD was absolutely fine. But on one of my cameras, it meant I had to change it to a very focal camera so I could zoom in for a bit more detail. This image shows you what the footage looks like when the camera's in night mode, when it hasn't got any light at all and it goes into infrared. And you can see that detail isn't going to be as good at night as it is in daytime light. This footage shows you what the Sony Starvis camera is like when it just had the light from my porch and you can see how vivid the colours are. It was a bit of a wow factor moment for me the first time I plugged one of these cameras in. You can see how much detail it picks up and how much better it would be to try and identify someone from that footage. Because I've um, only got four cameras and I'm only using HD cameras and not 4K, I only went for a one terabyte hard drive, which is fine for what I need. So after being quoted £1,600 or $2,000 by a company to do a job for a less spec than what I've got here, my total cost in the end was under £300 or $375, which is a huge difference. Another advantage of only having four camera on a four, what they call four channel CCTV system is the hard drive is much quieter at night than one with say 16 or 32 channels. Okay folks, that's it for this video. Uh, if it helped you or you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you really enjoyed it, please press the, uh, the like button and give it the thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe if you fancy it also. Uh, in my next video, I'll be showing you how I install the CCTV. Happy days.